Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how I paint this simple loose watercolour painting of um, the South Downs, uh, very near to me in the south of England, somewhere where I go walking and sketching. Um, this is at the Seven Sisters Country Park in East Sussex, one of my favourite places in the whole world. When I visit, I sometimes paint, but I sketch and I take photographs, then I come back to the studio and I really enjoy um, doing paintings of this area. This is a quarter imperial sheet of Milford cold pressed paper. It's lovely paper, it's 100% cotton, very forgiving um, and good for lifting. Um, it's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 to 60 degrees. Now I'm using a mixture of indigo, Prussian blue and Payne's grey on my large Japanese calligraphy brush. And I've got a lot of paint. I started with a fairly rich mixture and I'm using the water in the brush. It's a goat hair brush and it holds a lot of water. I'm using the water to dilute the paint as I spread it around the page. Now this is just a bit of raw sienna. I'm just adding in a little bit of, of glow. Something just to... Um, add a bit of interest to the sky. Now, as I'm pulling the paint down lower towards the horizon, um, it's becoming more diluted. So it's paler towards the horizon, which is gonna be a slight hill. I'm leaving some small white areas um, so that I've got some nice hard and soft edges in this sky. I think that looks okay. I'm just going to leave it to dry now. It's almost dry. Um, it's a little bit damp on the horizon line, but I think that's fine because then I might get a little bit of very slight diffusion. I'm using the same large three inch goat hair calligraphy brush and I've got a mixture here of Payne's Grey and sepia, a bit of indigo, um, to make a nice rich mixture. And I'm just loosely putting in some um, bushes and brambles and things just across the top of this hill. I don't want too much detail in this painting. Just want it to be nice and, nice and loose. I'm just going to come in and do the same on the other side, but there's a gate and a bit of fence um, so I'm leaving a gap for that and I shall do that once I've finished the foreground. This is a mixture of raw sienna and indigo and I'm just going to sweep it across the hill just to create a sort of grassy area very very loosely and quickly. Now I've added a lot more indigo to the mixture to make it darker and I'm going to bring that darker paint across the paler paint um, just to add sort of um, layers and different areas of um, the undergrowth and grass. There's lots of uh, brambles and gorse and things like that around here on either side of the path so I'm just going to indicate um, scrubby kind of um, bushes and dried grasses and teasels and things like that um, on either side of the path just loosely with uh, mostly with sepia uh, with some Payne's grey in it as well. Now I'm just going to darken up that area on, of the bushes just a little bit more add some shadow I'm just going to go back in with a slightly richer mixture of the indigo and raw sienna. Just going to pull that across underneath those bushes on the on the left, a little bit more down here, keeping my stroke sort of on a shallow diagonal to indicate the, the, the lay of the land. I'm just going to keep working here, wet in wet, which is the most wonderful technique for this sort of foreground, keeping it nice and loose, but with enough um, impressions and suggestions of the detail that you want to include. 
So I'm just dropping in little bits of paint here and there, allowing it to diffuse and allowing the colours to mix on the page. Now, while it's all still wet, I'm going to take the corner of um, a store card, a plastic store card. You could use a palette knife or anything like that, or the end of a paintbrush. I'm just going to pull up through the wet, rich paint, just the shapes of grasses bent by the wind. Um, just using the paint that's already there to pull out um, the shapes of the grasses, um, trying to get them like a tangle of grasses as they are on the downs. You could do all that detail work with a rigger if you prefer, but I, I like to add some of it in with the card while the paint's damp. Um, I think it really adds to the effect as long as you don't overdo it. Right, I'm going to go back in now with the large calligraphy brush and just add a little bit more dark and shape to that line of bushes at the top of the hill on the left. And now I'm going to leave it to dry. It's now dry, so I'm going to use a couple of flat brushes and put in the gate and the style across the gap on the top of that um, slight hill there. I'm going to use a half inch flat brush first and just put in the, um, a few fence posts, the verticals. And a few horizontals as well. Just on this um, right side, there's a stile there that we climb over. Right, um, I think I need to get my wider brush and I've got, I think it's an inch and a half, just a cheap old flat brush from a pound shop. Um, I'm just going to use this to put in, because it's the right size, to put in the, um, the horizontals of the gate. Then I'm going to go back to the smaller brush just to put in the cross beams on the gate. Just nice simple detail. The flat brush is really good for this sort of sort of thing. Just a few fence posts on each side now. Just dab that out a bit where it's a bit too dark there, using a tissue that was. Just trying to keep this fence and gate as simple as possible. Just could have kind of sort of bed it into the hedges on either side. Now I'm going to take a small Chinese calligraphy brush. Um, this has got a nice point and I'm using a nice rich mixture of Payne's Grey, Sepia and a bit of Indigo. It gives me a lovely dark to be able to get some shadows into the lower parts of these bushes on the right. The painting's nearly finished. I just think I just need to darken these up at the base just to balance out the composition a bit more. And this um, calligraphy brush is lovely for that. It's giving me some really lovely sort of random strokes because painting uh, wet paint onto dry like this, um, you want to sort of have a little tiny bit of detail so that you're building up the texture of those brambles in the hedge, but not too much. And so we just get nice loose marks just just a suggestion of detail there really just going to take a small squirrel mop um, just with some clean water and just soften off across the bottom and a few parts
Now I'm going to do the same to this group of bushes, but with a slightly browner mixture. Um, just add a little bit of dark here and there. These are just sort of the finishing touches really, just to bring the painting together. Now I'm just going to use my medium uh, Pro Art Harky brush and just put a little bit of shadow in using the tips of the brush under the gate and then a dry brush sweep for the path. Maybe a little bit more shadow. I think there's a little bit too much shadow there so again I'm just going to take a tissue and just gently dab out where I think there's a little bit too much paint while it's still wet. I'm just going to pull out a few very faint almost invisible little twigs twigs sticking out of this bank here in place, bank of bushes here in places. They're not really showing up much, but there's a couple there just to add a bit of interest to that, that edge. And that's the painting finished. Um, you could add a couple of birds if you wanted to, but I'm going to leave the sky nice and clear here. Now I'm going to take off the tape. It's all dry and it's dried lovely and flat as it usually does. And I'm pulling the tape off, being careful not to tear into the painting. So I'm pulling it, the tape away from the painting, just in case it was to catch. Well, here's the finished painting of um, the South Downs uh, with the gate and the style as a focal point. Um, a very simple sky and a simple... Uh, foreground with lots of undergrowth, a path and grasses and brambles either side. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please click the like button if you enjoyed it um, and subscribe if you haven't already and if you click on the bell icon you'll be notified every time I upload a new video which is once or maybe twice a week sometimes. Um, thanks so much to my patrons um, who support this channel. I really appreciate your support. And if you would like to support me, please follow the link below to my Patreon page. So thanks again, and um, I'll see you again soon. Have a lovely weekend and take care, stay safe and happy painting. See you soon. Bye.